Pokemon are based on animals, myths, and even objects. But did you know that some are even based on humans? In this video, I'll tell you the stories of some Pokemon that are based on real human beings. To me, one of the most bizarre Pokemon is Wobbuffet. Not only its name is interesting, but also its design. What is it supposed to be? A blue blob? Well, the appearance of a Wobbuffet is supposedly based on a punching bag or roly-poly toy. Considering the Pokemon is known for its counter-attacks, this origin makes a lot of sense, as both of these need some kind of force applied to them before striking back. But there is another aspect that should be taken into account here. In Japan, Wobbuffet is called so which means that's how it is. A very interesting name, but what is it actually based on? The saying Sonansu is a famous phrase of the Japanese comedian Sanpei Hayashiya. This comedian was known for the phrase Sonansu Okusan, which means that's how it is, my lady. Hence the name Sonansu. The interesting part about the design is that Wobbuffet raises his arm to his head, which was also something Hayashiya was known for. Sadly, Sanpei Hayashiya died a long time ago, in 1980 to be exact, and thus never got to know this very nice homage. Nevertheless, an amazing origin behind such a bizarre Pokemon. If you're a big Pokemon fan, you've probably heard of Uri Geller. Geller is an illusionist and a psychic, someone who claims to have supernatural abilities. One of his signature tricks is bending spoons. Turns out Kadabra also has a spoon. Psychic, bending spoons, a spoon in Kadabra's hand, quite some similarities. You may be thinking it's just a coincidence. After all, Geller isn't the only illusionist in the world, and certainly not the only one who can bend spoons. But then you take a look at the Japanese name of Kadabra, where it's called Jungera. Jungera is just one katakana off of the Japanese writing of Geller's name, at which point it can't be much of a coincidence anymore. So Kadabra being based on Geller seems very likely and intentional. But the fascinating part are the consequences of this. Let's just say that Geller wasn't entirely happy. Geller's accusations against Nintendo back in November 2000 were quite serious. To quote, Nintendo turned me into an evil, occult Pokemon character. Nintendo stole my identity by using my name and my signature image. Since 2003, the Pokemon Kadabra was therefore no longer allowed to be printed on Pokemon cards or to appear in the Pokemon anime. No doubt a bizarre story, but one with a happy end. On the 28th of November 2020, Geller apologized on Twitter and said that he was really sorry for what he had done 20 years ago. He reversed the ban, and Kadabra was finally allowed to appear on Pokemon cards and in the anime again. Pokemon Sword and Shield are not that old yet, so you might remember this Pokemon. Obstagoon. Obstagoon was a new evolution of Linoon, or to be more precise, an evolution of the Galarian form of Linoon. You will immediately notice that the Galarian line is a lot darker, but also the differences in posture and design. The entire Galarian line, but especially Obstagoon, show similarities to the band Kiss. In Galarian Zigzagoon and Galarian Linoon's designs, you can see the black star around the eyes quite well. This is not a coincidence because Paul Stanley, a member of the band KISS, also has a black star around his eye. But there's even more. Obstagoon has strong similarities to Gene Simmons. First of all, of course, the posture, then again the black and white pattern, but also the stretched out tongue. Gene Simmons became aware of this too. In an interview, he said that Pokemon has been a part of his household for decades, and that his children absolutely love Pokemon, and he was very happy about this homage. Hitmonlee is a very interesting Pokemon. I mean, it looks quite humanoid. And if you take a look at its name, Hitmonlee, you might think that Hitmonlee is based on Bruce Lee. I don't think I need to explain to you who that is, but I'll do it anyway. He was a very famous martial artist and actor who became famous all over the world through his movies. But the more interesting thing is the Japanese name of Hitmonlee. While the Western names generally make a reference to Bruce Lee, the Japanese name suggests something different. In Japan, the Pokemon is called Savamula, which is based on the Japanese kickboxer Tadashi Savamura. And and Tadashi Savamura is an absolute kickboxing legend. Out of a total of 241 fights, he won 232, 228 of them by knockout. That makes it a knockout rate of 94.6%, which is apparently extremely high. He was also one of the first famous participants in the sport and was in part responsible for the early boom in the sport's popularity. I am not entirely sure if he would be able to beat Matt from Wii Sports, but it's still very cool that he was honored in the this way in Pokemon.
Speaking of Hitmon Lee, Hitmon Chan is also based on a real human. Who exactly, though, is a bit difficult to say. Here, too, interpretations differ a little from country to country. Let's again start with the English name. You can probably tell by the name already. But Hitmon Chan is based on Jackie Chan. He is a Chinese actor, filmmaker, martial artist, stuntman, and singer. He was born in 1954 and is well known in the film industry, but he also developed his very own fighting style. But if you want a more precise answer, then we should probably look at the Japanese name. After all, Pokemon is a Japanese series. In Japanese it's called Ebiwara and is based on the Japanese boxer Hiroyuki Ebihara. And of course, Hiroyuki Ebihara is not just some random boxer. He was actually the flyweight, world champion. In his career he fought a total of 68 fights, won 62 of them, 33 of them by knockout and only lost 5 times and one draw. As you can see, a very similar story as Hitmonlee. People often joke about Snorlax being based on certain people's moms as a joke, but I was amazed to find out that Snorlax is actually based on a real person, on Koji Nishino, an employee of Game Freak. I really don't mean this in a negative way when I say that you can definitely see some similarities between Snorlax and Koji Nishino. The body shape and the face shape are somewhat round, so Snorlax's design makes perfect sense. But that's not all. Snorlax's Japanese name. Kabigon is actually Koji Nishino's nickname and is based on another popular Nintendo series, Kirby. He apparently got this nickname because he has quite the appetite, just like Kirby. And that it's not just a coincidence that Snorlax looks a bit like Koji Nishino can be seen in Pokemon Black and White. In Pokemon Black and White you can find Koji Nishino in Game Freak's office, where he says, I'm Snorlax. No, no. I'm the planner, which is a nice reference to the Pokemon's origin. 